Hi everyone. Settle down, class. This is going to be this is going to be a speedy talk. It's quite a challenge. 15 minutes. All right. What I'm going to talk about the wiki way and mass collaboration. Tiki wiki, obviously, add an example with the Firefox support site. Now, what are the most important collaborative projects in the history of humanity? Anyone? Yes. Wikipedia? What else? Nothing else? Wiki how to? Okay, what else? Wiki travel? Lots of wiki stuff. How about non wiki stuff, which is highly collaborative? International Space Station. Okay, but I did, uh, I did write volunteer mass collaboration. So I'm guessing a lot of those people uh, do that for their job. So I've asked this question maybe 20 times in 20 different talks, and nobody has ever convinced me of a better answer than Wikipedia. So I think it's quite fascinating that within less than 10 years, we have built basically the, the largest collaborative knowledge base. Now, um, what do we use wikis for? Of course, Wikipedia is the most known. That's very obvious, an encyclopedia. A lot of people use it for documentation, for documenting a project. Why is it efficient? Well, a lot of people use it for collaboration, for project management, because it's flexible, it's adaptable. Lots of uses in corporate. For example, the previous uh, talk about XWiki, very popular in, uh, in corporate space. Now, it's great for unstructured content, but you can structure it using tags and categories. Now, why a wiki? Well, here's, here's what I think. So give someone a fish and you feed them for a day. Teach someone to fish and you feed them for a lifetime. You've all heard that. Now, add that knowledge to a wiki, and countless people will be able to learn on their own and share their knowledge, and many, many, many more will feed their families. So it's all about empowerment. Now, there's only one problem with this. It's not good for the fish, because it, it tends to, have, to you know, lead to overfishing. But then we have to have another wiki on like fish bank management. So one of the big things we're trying to replace is email. How, do we, how are we more efficient than using email, which is still the most used application? Wikis are designed for that. Now, what happens when you apply the wiki way but to software development. Okay? Think about this. Not the wiki way to design content, to write content, but the wiki way to develop software. Okay? Now do this for over six years and have over 225 people coding collectively on a single code base and that use their own, their, use the application for their own needs. That's what we mean by dog fooding. Uh, who here has heard the expression dog fooding? Okay, so for the yellow ones, Im imagine a publicity about dog food, and then they say, it tastes better. Have you ever wondered who tasted it and who says it tastes better? So dog fooding means that you use your own tools to solve your own problems, and basically you, you suffer through your, your own dog food before making it available. So what, ha what happens when you do all that is basically tiki-wiki. So, it's, uh, we found a backronym, so that's an acronym that you find after you've started the project. So it's basically tightly integrated knowledge infrastructure. So it's a, imagine 200 people have added to this and have solved their problem. So basically, um, it's a huge application. There's a thousand pages of documentation, um, over a million lines of code, and that's why in 15 minutes I can't tell you everything it does. I just want to get the message across that it does a lot of things. Every two hours, there's someone in the world that's committing some new code. Uh, it's a standard PHP My MySQL application you can run on, on any, just about any host. And it's basically a combination, a hybrid of content management system, groupware, and uh, a wiki, obviously. Now, I just like copy-pasted the list of major, not, not all major features, but just the first level features. Of course, you know, when we're preparing the slides, we're not supposed to put more than X words on the slide, but I figured this would get the point across. And imagine that each one of those features has other settings, right? So if you install the file gallery, for example, it has sub-features, sub-settings. So in all, there's over a thousand settings in the admin panel. So it's a massive, massive application. So that's good, because there's lots of features. Um, 
What that also means is that there's not, there's not the, the concept in, like in many other applications of third party modules, extensions, add-ons, whatever you call them. Everything is in the core. Now, that's really good for some things, and it's not so good for other things. So, the good thing is that it makes it easier to upgrade, it makes it, makes it easier to, for all these features to be in there. Um, it's great because uh, developers will collaborate on these features, um, but it's complex, right? So you really need the, the two best use cases for your Tiki Wiki is if you have lots of projects and you always want to use the same, the same base to handle 20 or 30 or 50 different projects and you want to you know, reuse almost the same thing, or if you have one project or two projects which are fairly complex and you need lots of features. That's where Tiki Wiki is really good. If you just need a blog, well, then it's totally overkill and you'll, it'll be more complicated than what you need. But you can do a blog anyway. Um, the big thing I see is about like, people collaborating on features. and lots of projects, you have uh, various modules or add-ons that do more or less the same thing. In our case, that's not the way it works. People will collaborate together, and because it's the wiki way, they'll collaborate to extend features. Now, just, I'll just throw in some features. So basically, it's our permission system. So basically, you have users that can be in groups, and groups can be in groups. And you have over 200 different permissions. Just for the wiki, you have 50, 25 different permissions. So can I view the history? Can I edit the page? Can I attach a file? Can I comment? And so it's very, very fine grain. And then each feature will have a different number of features. And you can have these, feature, these permissions which are system-wide or uh, by item. And there's also a category level, but the category level is not as fine grained. So in terms of permissions, that's, really, that's why in an internet setting, it's really good because you can really control who sees what, who can do what. There's obviously the wiki engine, which is, which is very powerful. Some of the cool features are the, for example, you can make a book, you can have a table of content, have structure. Typically, wikis will tend to be very, very, um, very unfocused, very um, chaotic. Well, there's a way to, to uh, organize this chaos using uh, structures or tags or categories and all these features are here. So it's a very, very powerful wiki engine. If you, just as a wiki engine, it's very good. Now, there's a tracker, uh, like a form generator. So basically, this is to build applications. So you can build your forms. For example, I need to, anything that you would do in a database or in a spreadsheet, you could do web-based with, with our trackers feature. So basically, just to give you an idea of, uh, these are the field types you can have. So you can build, I want a text field, I want a drop down, I want check boxes, and I want to make lists. Well, you can do all of that point and click without programming. And it's multilingual. Um, so basically what that means is that you could create your form, your, your, your labels can be multilingual, but your drop down menus as well. So you don't have to create several forms for several different languages. There's a calendar, pretty standard. Uh, it's just for a group wear type event, event calendar. Uh, you have news, news and blogs, basically any type of uh, portal type system. Uh, discussion forums, of course, it's a collaboration tool. Um, so discussion forums, which are quite, uh, quite advanced. You can integrate with a mailing list. To have, so some people prefer mailing lists, some prefer, people prefer the, the forum, so they can each be in their own world, but things are synchronized. Um, the file and image gallery, so if you want to have a more of a document management system type thing, where there's galleries, sub-galleries, which each one have their different permissions, you can have that in the file gallery. In the wiki, there's something called staging and approval. This is basically a way for people to have the wiki way, so you can have it open and let people edit your content, but it has to be approved by someone before it goes live. So this gives you the possibility of getting uh, suggestions from, from, for example, your customers or whatever, but still having that tight control and making sure there's not any spam or nothing gets through even for a minute. Um, okay, so this is just use cases. I'm not going to read them because it's just to give you an idea of these are the things that TikiWiki does very well, uh, considering uh, basically, you install it. This is, this is the type of things that are, it's really good at. And I'll just touch on the, on the multilingual aspect. That's really one of the strong points. Typically, in the wiki world, it's quite difficult to, uh, to manage translations because normally, when you translate something, you wait, you're supposed to have uh, the source document is supposed to be complete before you start translating. Of course, in the wiki world, the source document is never, never finished. 
So, but you still have to start translating. So how do you coordinate that? How do you organize that? And TikiWiki has a system for that. Uh, these are things that TikiWiki can do uh, s fairly well, but in some cases it's just, uh, like for example, you can have a blog with TikiWiki, but it's just, it should be easier. But you can do it. Uh, you could use it for all, all these, these uses. Um, but this is still very good. And then we have a bunch of things that TikiWiki doesn't do well yet. But it is our intention to eventually, as we involve more people, as projects come along, to also improve these aspects. So, as you can see, it's, it's quite ambitious to say, you know, we're trying to do everything. And, and some people will say, that's, that's, that's crazy, and maybe it is, but so far, so good. So basically, uh, people will just join in. And the thing is, as you add use cases, you don't have to proportionally add the same number of features. You add a few features, and you can hit other use cases. So, one example of a site is the, the, the Firefox support site. So basically, um, what Firefox needed is a wiki-based site so for collaboration. They needed volunteers to be able to, to, to contribute. It had to be multilingual with good multilingual features. And they needed the stage, staging and approval. That's, and they, they basically uh, contributed that feature. And, and that's a good example, I think, of two open source projects working together to improve. And basically, everything that's been done in this case is available, obviously, as open source. Now, some of the new exciting things that's coming in version 3. So version 3 is coming out in a few months. Uh, it's already pretty stable in Trunk. For anybody who, uh, who's a developer who's be in, who'd be interested, you can check out Trunk. It, it's working fairly well. Um, the big new features are web services, semantic wiki links, um, and the mind mapping. So basically more and more uh, intelligence on our metadata organization around the wiki pages. And we also have a new system to manage large numbers of TikiWiki installs. Now, I talked about one of the things that, that that's often comes is, and it's like, how can you have all these features? How can you have 225 people working on the same code base? And I realized that that's not the, the most common model. The most common model is a small core and lots of external thir third-party add-ons. That's not our model. Now, I believe that for what we're doing, it's, our model obviously is better. That's how we work. Now, the advantages are, there's no feature duplication because someone comes along, they have to work with what's there. So they have to extend the existing features. Um, there's excellent code review because if you're going to code something, then you, you, you're looking in the code, you, you figure out where it's supposed to be. If there's something already there, maybe it's not finished, maybe it's not quite there, but you have to extend it. You can't just like, oh, I, I don't like that. I'm just going to start from scratch. And that's, that could be a problem because you end up with all these duplicate functionalities. Um, and here, here I'm going to throw out something. Uh, as far as I know, and I, I'm looking forward to people correcting me, TikiWiki is the, web the open source web, applications, web application with the most built-in features, as far as I know. If I'm wrong, I'm sure someone here knows, and please tell me, but as far as I know, that's the case. And why? Because that's our model. Other systems that are very popular and very, uh, very important don't have the same model. So, I, I, guess, I guess that's the case. But it does bring challenges. When you open up TikiWiki and you see the admin panel, there's a thousand checkboxes. There's a thousand different options, settings, uh, to cover these hundreds of features. So that's quite a problem. There's a learning curve there. And it's quite difficult as well. What should be the sensible defaults? Because if you're setting up an intranet or a, a public website, what should be the, the default for permissions, for example? So what we've come up with is called profiles. Basically, profiles are a way to pre-configure a TikiWiki. It's like a package of settings that are all together. Uh, and because if you say, like, an application is really good for the code, but the important thing is your knowledge of how to use it, right? So that's why it's really cool. If you need help, if you're setting up a system with X and you have your friend that's done it before, it's great because the first time you solve a problem, it could take you five hours. The second time, it's five minutes. So it's very important to have access to expertise. Now, how do you share that expertise? So there's ways for the code, for coders to share expertise. They just code. But power users and, and people that configure systems, how do they share it? So what we come up is profiles. Profiles is better, basically a way to set a TikiWiki in a certain way for a specific issue, problem, use case, which is collaborative in a wiki page and that could be shared. And we could easily have hundreds of profiles, one for Chiki for charity, one for uh, 
multilingual website, it, the list is unlimited, and basically those are shareable and distributable. So this, thank you very much. <laughs>